Hey there, Dr. Dickon Weatherby from Optimal DX and the ODX Academy. Welcome to another of my Know Your Biomarker videos. And we're going to be switching things up a little bit now. We're going to be talking about in the next series of videos over the next weeks uh, and months. We're going to be talking about some of the newer biomarkers that we have added into the ODX application and is now, or these are now available to you uh, to use in your patient's functional health reports. We're going to kick things off by looking at apolipoproteins and more specifically apolipoprotein A1, apolipoprotein B, and we're going to finish up with a little discussion on a very, very important biomarker called lipoprotein little a. So in order to understand uh, apolipoproteins, we need to go back to the original molecule of cholesterol. Now, cholesterol is a hydrophobic or water-repellent molecule, and it needs uh, protein carrier molecules in order to carry it around the body, in order for it to be delivered into the tissues and also removed from tissues and taken back to the liver. So these proteins are called apoproteins, and when those apoproteins are combined with a lipid or cholesterol, they become apolipoproteins and form the outer shell of the lipoprotein molecule. So here we have a, an image of a lipoprotein. As you can see on the outside of the lipoprotein are the apolipoproteins. And these are the proteins that kind of help keep that lipoprotein together. And of course, the main lipoproteins that we're all familiar with, they're all measured on the lipid panels, are of course high density lipoproteins or more commonly known as HDL or low density lipoproteins or LDL. Now the lipoprotein is the vehicle it is transporting cholesterol around the body. So um, along with the apolipoproteins that you can see on the outside of the molecule itself, we have a sterified cholesterol, we have free cholesterol, we have phospholipids, and of course, lipoproteins also transport triglycerides. So let's dive in now and take a look at the apolipoproteins themselves. Um, and then we're gonna go into looking at ApoA1 and ApoB. So um, as I've said previously, the apolipoproteins themselves, they're found on the surface of that lipoprotein. They help hold the lipoprotein together, and they come in various different shapes and sizes. And the two of the most important ones are apolipoprotein A1 and apolipoprotein B. Now, most ApoA1 is found on high-density lipoproteins, or HDL, and the majority of ApoB is found on low-density lipoproteins, but also on a molecule called very low-density lipoproteins, or VLDL. Now, ApoA1 represents about 60 to 70 percent of the protein content of HDL, and it plays a crucial role in transporting cholesterol from peripheral tissues to the liver for processing and degradation. So when we're evaluating ApoA1, this can help determine the cardiovascular risk in those people with reduced levels of HDL, increased total cholesterol, and increased triglyceride levels, and those also with a family history of cardiovascular disease. So elevated levels are considered protective against cardiovascular disease and are believed to be a greater predictor for a lower incidence of cardiovascular disease than HDL alone. Now, the more clinically significant part of this is that low levels of A1 are uh, considered to be an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. So elevated levels are a sign of cardiovascular protection. Low levels are associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Let's take a look now at ApoB. So apolipoprotein B facilitates the transport of lipids through the bloodstream. It combines with dietary lipids to form the triglyceride-rich lipoprotein called VLDL, and over time, as it travels through the blood, VLDL drops off its triglyceride content to become the cholesterol-rich lipoprotein known as LDL. Evaluation of ApoB levels can help assess cardiovascular risk and factors underlying elevated triglycerides. Now, elevated ApoB levels are associated with an increased risk for cardiovascular disease an increased risk of atherosclerotic coronary artery disease. So in summary of these two particular molecules, we have ApoA1 and ApoB, and some would actually suggest that measuring these and looking at the various different shifts and changes in the biomarker levels 
are actually much more helpful in predicting who is going to be suffering from cardiovascular risk. Now, I want to finish this conversation off by looking at another molecule um, that is measured on a lipid panel or an advanced lipid panel, and that is lipoprotein little a. So lipoprotein little a, or, or it's known as LP little a, is a small, dense lipoprotein. It's composed of a low-density lipoprotein particle and one apolipoprotein B100 molecule linked by a disulfide bond to the apolipoprotein A. Now, excess LPA is associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular death uh, in those with already diagnosed and prevalent coronary artery disease and stroke. So increased blood levels of LP little a may be a strong independent risk factor for atherosclerosis and early cardiovascular disease. So that kind of summarizes those three apolipoproteins and the lipoprotein little a. These have now been added into the ODX application. They are ready for you to be uh, to add that data in from your patient's blood work and now gets reported on the functional health report. If you're interested in uh, learning more about the functional health report and the ODX application, go on over to optimaldx.com. We have a free trial available for you to uh, run up to five uh, patients' blood test results produce uh, our amazing graphically intensive reporting and uh, use that in your patient consults. So this is Dr. Weatherby. I hope you found this helpful and useful. Um, we will be joining you uh, again for another Know Your Biomarker video. Until then, be well.